Hello everyone and welcome back to our course here and today we are going to discuss about the fundamentals of uh, data science processing. In fact, fundamental steps in the data science processing. So we have seen very basics of uh, data science fundamentals and some points on uh, big data analytics and this class today is going to lay a foundation for the other lectures that we have ahead. So what we are going to see today is, here is the overview. You can see various blocks. So at first we have to define the goal of our objective of our data science uh, processing. For example, if our goal is to obtain a valuable information about say weather, then that is our goal. So what is the question that you are going to raise is very important in this part. Once you know the objective, then you can go ahead and collect the information. For example, you know your goal is about weather forecast, then you are going to collect the data related to weather. Then you are going to have a data preparation part where you are going to clean the unwanted data and so on. Then is the next step is data analysis. As you can see here, in data analysis process, again we have various uh, models that you can build so that you can come up with uh, needed predictions if needed or come up with the right model for our goal. Then to visualize the results, uh, we have various tools to do so. And finally, to get insight and actually deploy or implement uh, what you have done. And in fact, the whole thing creates the value because that is the main idea coming up with this value out of this whole data science processing. So that's the basic processing uh, steps that you have here in um, these blocks. Let's go in to one by one and let's examine one by one. Let's go to the first one which is our goal. Yes, before we go into any data science projects or if you want to do some data, big data analytics, at first we have to know what is our objective. In other words, we have to define our goals. Yes, in fact, we have come up with the right questions. The hardest part is the actual problem definition. Unless we define the problem clearly, we can't come up with the right answers. So in many cases, people spend a lot of time in thinking about this problem and coming up with a question, the right question. Yes, data analysis or data visualization or data modeling, all those stuffs are not that important. But what's more important is to defining the problem, yes. So in most cases, many people spend more time in defining the problem. So that's very vital. Even for example, uh, if somebody is doing his PhD, so for him or her, defining the problem is the hardest part. Once they have come up with a question or the problem, then they can work towards that problem for a few years to obtain the needed result. Yes, this is one of the important step in the data science processing. Yes, once you defined your problem, you know what you really want, then we can go ahead and collect the needed information that is going to satisfy your question or going to answer your questions. As data collection is the next step. So data collection is the process of gathering and measuring information and this information is going to help you answer the relevant questions that you are asked. And this data collection as uh, stated here can come from many different uh, forms. So for example, maybe you are uh, collecting data like for example the Twitter data and you are trying to examine uh, what particular word has been tweeted during a period of time and you want to examine from which country or the tweet this word. 
and from this you are trying to establish a relationship and trying to obtain an insight out of this. So that is where you are going to focus. Yes, now we are going to focus on the Twitter data because you are interested in something related to the Twitter based um, questions. Yes, data collection as you can see here there are various places from where we can collect the data. Data collection is the process of gathering and measuring information. So, how to collect the, this data is again another question. So, traditionally what we do is like we take survey and we do experiments, we get observations from the experiment sometimes and we collect observed data and of course, sampling is also considered to be like data sample data are collected. So, that is the traditional way and even today we are doing the same thing in many cases. But today we have the liberty of using other open data sets that are available. If suppo suppose our objective is to uh, come up with some prediction based on already existing data, then you can go for the open data sets where you already have those data or we can go for the data from sensors, social media, satellite, internet, we have like huge volumes of data. And of course, we do have many databases from where we can retrieve data and if we get or if we have needed permission, we can use other data sources and sometimes if you need a very specific data, at times you can get those data by paying a small amount. Uh, for example, like even uh, Fitbit, the wearable devices, they generate a lot of data, but usually they do not share the data with the customers. Uh, in fact, you can get uh, sample data for free, but if you need uh, the whole data or if you want continuously, if you want to get all those data, in fact, that is your data. If you want to get that data, then you have to pay them some, some money to get your own data. And in fact, those data are quite valuable data because that is your own data and that is your, it, it talks about your health and from there you can in fact see or analyze your own health status. Okay, let us uh, move on to the next category. So, the next category is the data preparation. So, in data preparation process, it involves various uh, elements uh, for example, uh, starting from the data exploration. So, as you have gathered the data, now you have the list of data sets and uh, right away when you look at those data, you can think of uh, certain things. For example, you can think of well, what is the average value of this data or what is the correlation between these two uh, variables or you can consider like, okay, can I just see this data? I, I want to visualize this data. Right away, you can check it out right away. You, you have not started the analysis, but even before the analysis, you can do certain prelimi preliminary analysis like you can just look at it and on looking at the data itself, you can get some idea about this data that is you are having in hand. Yes, that is a simple exploration. You are just exploring what is there in the data that you have just obtained. Then comes the data cleaning process. Uh, well, data that we get from this world is uh, kind of messy or fuzzy and we have to clean these data. For example, the data they have some noise in it and they have uh, some unwanted information. Yes, we have to do certain process maybe just filtering or data aggregation whatever is the data, we have to still look for some unwanted information that might be found in those data. We have to do certain cleaning process and at times even data are missing. Initially, we get those data, some data are missing or some data are like duplicated. So, we know we do have certain process on how to clean those data like remove the duplicate data or if you have some data is missing, try to see how you can compensate for those data. Uh, it is not a good idea usually to put zeros instead of those missing data. Sometimes people take mean value or 
of course, you can do certain simple stats to fill in those missing data or in certain cases, they just uh, take out those set of data that are missing or those related data that are in line or in, that is in line with those uh, missing data. They just remove it and put aside and that would be considered later on. Yes, data cleaning process is again an important step in data preparation. In fact, we are trying to prepare ourselves to use these data. And uh, at times, the data that you have in hand are of different format, and you may have to convert to the format that is easy for you to transform this data. For example, if your data is of in a different domain and you have to transform to a different domain for analysis, uh, I'm not just talking about like if you if the data is in time domain convert into frequency domain. Well, there are advantage of doing so because we do have uh, flexibility of uh, using certain techniques, transformation techniques to do that to do the transformation, and then you can actually analyze the actual data. Not only that, uh, your transformation of data should be based on the actual hypothesis that you have in mind. Yes, you can use various um, manipulation methods to manipulate the data uh, so that you can you have the data in the right format. At times, you may have to reduce the dimensionality of the data. Maybe your data is of uh, three dimension, and you want to reduce into two dimension. At times, your data is of two dimension, and you may have to reduce into single dimension. But uh, we have to be careful. Like uh, if you're going to reduce the dimension, of course, the complexity of data is going to be reduced, but are we missing out some vital information? That is again a vital question to be asked. Yes, this whole data pre-processing step involves like exploration, cleaning of data, transforming, and uh, the whole thing is kind of data wrangling. In other words, you're kind of organizing the data. You're making the data in right shape. Uh, even like feature extraction or uh, feature selection uh, might be a good tool for us in organizing the data. You may have data, you may see data, some data uh, may have a similar stuff, so you can gather those similar data together or organize together. A similar group of uh, data can be uh, organized together or sometimes you may have to remove the data that are being repeated again and again so that you can use uh, the same data to represent the other information. As these are some of the basic uh, data pre preparation process, it's again, it falls into the data pre-processing, in other words. So then comes this uh, data analysis. So in data analysis, it's very simple, like you have the input data and you choose a technique for analysis purpose and you are going to build a model. That's it, you're going to have the output. So the key area here is the techniques for analysis. Yes, we have to choose the right way or right techniques for analyzing your data. There are various techniques available, and uh, in this uh, lecture, you are going to see some basic techniques that we have in hand. So we are going to see uh, this five basic technique. I'm not going to explain in depth all these five techniques, but in the coming lectures, we are going to see uh, some of these techniques in depth. Uh, for example, like we have regression, classification, clustering, and these three parts are some of the basic techniques that is available. So we are going to look at these three parts in depth. Uh, and there are more techniques in hand, like association analysis, uh, graph analytics. I will explain them in detail, but we are not going to uh, see like various examples on those two techniques. Well, let's uh, move on from uh, the various techniques into specifically, we are going to look at uh, regression, classification, clustering. That's going to be in the coming classes, but let's see what it is in this lecture. The regression. A regression uh, 
in generally we are going to talk about uh, linear regression in general uh, for our course. So regression is generally bringing out or it brings out the relationship between two variables. So we call one as the independent variable, the other one is like dependent variable. And it in fact gives us a prediction value for the future. You can actually predict what's going to be the values, certain values. Let's see this graph. As you can see this graph, uh, let's look at this graph where you have this uh, linear model. Uh, and the linear model has two slopes. One is going upwards, uh, we can call it as a, like a positive slope. The other one is coming downwards, which is like a negative slope. But these two are kind of linear slope. So you have uh, the linear trend, for example, maybe you can consider the first one going up is like uh, you have the experience in the x-axis and the salary in the y-axis. As the number of years of experience increases, your salary gradually increases. The second one you can consider as like, for example, you have a car, uh, the second-hand cars, and you want to buy the second-hand cars, and you can consider uh, maybe the number of years the car used in the x-axis, or the number of miles or number of kilometers it went in the x-axis, and the price in the y-axis. As the number of years is less, your price of the car is higher. As the number of years increases, the price would go down. Or in other words, the number of kilometers, it has gone. So, so that's a very basic uh, thing. But from this trend, you can actually calculate. For example, the if you consider uh, the number of kilometers the car has gone, and uh, in the x-axis, let's see here. Suppose is this is the kilometers that you have in hand, and suppose you want to know what is the price of a car at this point of time. Let's say here is like maybe one hundred thousand kilometer, and if you want to know the price of the car, you can just go and hit this line here, or if you want to know the price of the car at this level, you can just hit this line. So this is going to be your predicted value. So approximately your car value is set at this level. So that it's kind of a prediction where we can try to see what is the value of the car that you are going to buy. So you don't want to buy an undervalued car or like you don't want to buy uh, if, if of course there is an undervalue, then there might be some reasons for that. So you may have to consider that. And definitely you don't want to buy uh, an expensive car. You, you want to give the right price, the right market price of your car. So the same applies to the salary as well. So if you are having a number of years of experience, then you are going to expect uh, a certain level of salary. Yes, that's the expected value. The same way. Uh, in this regression analysis, later on in our course, we will also see in detail like with examples or specifically how we can model, mathematically model this system and then we can predict uh, the upcoming values for a certain examples, for certain application. And of course, we do have sometimes come up with some non-linear relationship. And uh, we will not consider nonlinear uh, relation or not nonlinear parts in our course. As in fact, uh, there are ways to model such uh, factors. Sometimes the whole model looks like nonlinear, randomly dispersed. Yes, we do have uh, methods to establish a relationship between those models and try to predict what's going to be the uh, future of uh, certain nonlinear relations. Then comes the classification. So here, uh, as you can see this picture, uh, there are two sets. One is in black, the other one is in white. So the main objective is to classify this two groups. 
So, in order to classify these two groups, uh, here we have the H1 and here you have the H2 and here you have the H3. So, we can clearly see that uh, H1 and H2 classify this group quite rightly. It can split up this group quite rightly. H3 is not clearly classifying these two groups, which means that H3 is not a good classifier. So, here we are uh, talking about a linear classifier. So, this achieves uh, by making a classification decision based on the linear combination of the characteristics. So, we can say that H2 is a better uh, linear classifier because H2 lies quite far from both groups. Whereas, H1 if you see H1, we can see that H1 is quite close to both, uh, both these values. For example, here it is very close to the section there as well as here it is very close to this part, the Y group as well as the black one. So, we do not uh, consider H1 as to be the best linear classifier because our main objective is to classify the two, two groups. We do not want uh, this classifier to be closer to any of these two groups. Let me give an example. For example, if you want to uh, have a review for uh, the movies, you are talking about movie reviews. You want to know whether this movie is good or bad. And uh, if you want a classifier to classify this movie as good movie or bad movie, then you like to have a classifier that clearly shows you whether this is, well this is a good movie and this is a bad movie. You really want to know the line that classifies this two categories. We do not want the classifier to be closer to like say for example, it says okay, this is good movie, uh, well this is also a kind of bad movie. Well, because we are talking about a linear classifier, we want a definite uh, classification, but there are other classification models where uh, we get as we go deeper into this classification, there are some complex models where we can define uh, multiple uh, objectives and then we can clearly uh, see whether we can able to classify this non-linear classification. Since we are talking about linear classification, we want a definite uh, uh, cut between the good and bad. So, we will see in depth uh, with various applications of uh, maybe movie reviews or restaurant reviews. Uh, we can actually easily use uh, simple algorithms to classify. For example, maybe you, we can try to extract the text and then from the text, we can see whether the text has uh, the movie, I mean the movie reviews have the sentences and the sentences would have uh, words and from these words we can see whether this word is a positive, re it referring the positive words or the negative words and eventually we can uh, classify whether this is a positive one or the negative one. Then comes the clustering part. Clustering is kind of uh, grouping together, the grouping the grouping things with same set together. Uh, in other words, uh, we can consider like you have group of people and among this group of people, you want to cluster group of adults together, group of children together, group of uh, say old aged people and uh, you, you are defining certain limits. For example, for uh, children or teenager, you are setting limits like Okay, children are from 2 to 12 and the teenagers are from 13 to 18 and adults are from say uh, 19 to 35 and old ages from like 36 and so on, 36 onwards. So, those values you can define and based on the definition you can provide a clusters. In both uh, classification and clustering, we can set uh, threshold values to determine our uh, the place or objective. So, as you can see here in this picture also, uh, we have the classified 
or in other words we have clustered actually, where three clusters are clearly seen and uh, there are uh, some outliers for these uh, three clusters. As you can see there are some uh, red values over here, it is kind of an outliers, you can say it as an outlier and then the green one over here. We will see how to examine or how to handle with those values uh, later on. Since this is just the basic uh, introduction to the whole data analysis process and we are dealing with regression, classification, clustering and so on. Let us look at uh, one more uh, part here. This is the association analysis. Today yes, the business uh, retailers are using this methods to increase their sales. For example, as you can see from this picture, uh, someone who buys the milk, whenever he buys the milk, some different percentage time he also includes bread and 43 percentage time he includes eggs and 29 percentage time he includes toilet papers. So, now you are coming up with a relationship, an associate analysis though uh, toilet papers and like maybe eggs or bread are not much related to one another. Based on the purchase history, we can see there is an association between these parameters. So, that is how uh, in marketing field for example, in the retail store what they do is like they keep the bread as well as the milk next to each other as well as the egg. So, it is easy for the customers to pick up all those stuff right away, which means that they had they do not have to go from one place to another place. In the meantime, as they go from one place to another place, sometimes they forget things and they may not buy in your store. So, to make them buy in your store, you make this analysis and then just keep these things next to one another and so that the customers, they are easy to identify their products and they just take and buy it out. So, that is uh, good for those uh, businesses. Yes, this kind of analysis is very uh, po getting popular in the business areas. So, that is a little bit different from uh, the classification and clustering schemes and you will also notice that this analysis, association analysis uh, not only have association with related product. Uh, there are times uh, where the, we have come across with analysis that has association with completely different products. Say for example, the products like uh, beers and diapers, they are completely different products, but still they have found that there is some relationship between these two products, especially during the weekends. Yes. When we make certain analysis, you can come up with the right uh, pattern and then we can see the right association between this product. And you have this graph analytics. Yes, graph analytics are used to connect or it, uh, it used to establish the connection between two entities. So, these two entities can be uh, two friends in a social network or they can be like two scientists uh, who are working on the same field or they can be two students who are studying in different schools in different country. Yes, there are various ways we can establish uh, such connections. And in fact, uh, these days the whole world has been kind of connected. So, when you talk about the social media connections, uh, people say that the whole world is connected and there is a 6 degree of separation and bit because of this various social medias like LinkedIn, Facebook and ResearchGate and so on, there are a lot of other social medias available and because of these uh, medias, we have, we are in fact reducing this connection from one person to another to less than the 6 degree of separation. Yes, this uh, graph, once you are getting connected to these graphs, actually you can use various uh, graph algorithms to solve various problems. 
you, know, you can optimize the search for example or you can optimize the shortest path between these two nodes. The nodes can be a person if you are talking about a social media or it can be a place if you are talking about different cities are connected by means of these edges. Yes, there are various applications of this graph analytics. Yes, once we done with this data analysis, we make sure that uh, our data analysis works well. So, we should validate our techniques. For example, maybe we use the regression methods or a classification method to build a model and from this model you are trying to establish a relationship and then we have to validate and we have to evaluate to see that this model is the right one uh, to be used. So, we can double check and verify our data analysis. So, as far as the results are concerned, yes we can uh, establish a visualization of our results. So, there are a lot of tools available for doing so like the two popular tools that are available for data visualization is the tabula and power b and even excel is still a good tool even many people are using this excel. The may, many people even in fact they do not know the exact significance or the power of excel. Excel can be used to certain level for establishing uh, this data visualization. They can they are very useful tool as well. So, once we come up with these data and all those stuff then in fact, we have to get the insight from this whole story. We had the data, we told a big story and this story does this story has some insight out of the story. What is the moral of the story that you are telling? Yes, we have to come up with this insight and based on the insight you are making the right uh, decisions. Okay, you know that because of this uh, association analysis I have come up with the strategy that I am going to place uh, what is that? We have this toilet papers and eggs next to one another. Is this decision the right one to do? Well, we need insight that is where the human input comes in. We need experts, we need those people who have domain knowledge based on all the analysis that you have done, we have to give the right input, get the insight and once you have this insight, now the next goal is to deploy, take action. We have to take action in sense that ok, let us do it, let us keep the toilet paper and the eggs next to one another. That is the deployment the action that you are taking and see what happens. Well, at times you may have to go back and do this whole process of data analysis again with certain modification. Yes, that is kind of iteration. You get some feedback from the action that you have taken and based on the feedback you may have to remodel your whole system sometimes. So, that you get the right value behind this insight. So, that is our goal right. We have to get the right value behind this insight. The overall objective or overall goal is that does our question that we have raised initially before even starting the whole data analysis process, is it really a good question? If it is a good question then this question has to bring out some value, some innovation, some time saving, energy saving or even life saving. Yes, that is the final goal of our whole data analysis process. As today we examined very basics of uh, data analysis. In fact, we saw various steps involved in data analysis process. We saw that data collection is an important step. In fact, before data collection we have to define our objective and come up with the right question then you collect the related data that would answer your question and then you are going to the next step of uh, 
data preparation which involves data pre-processing. You are trying to explore the data and then you are going to model the data as well. So that is where the data analysis comes in. We saw simple models like regression, classification, clustering, association analysis and graph analytics. Finally, with, with this uh, analysis result, you are trying to see some insight out of it. And does your insight is good enough to take the action? And after you take the action, and if you didn't get the real value or the output from this, try to remodel the whole thing. It's kind of iterative. And then come up with the right analysis again and refine it and the take action again so that you can come up with the value that you're looking at creating the value yes so that's the end of today's course and uh, we are looking forward to see you in the next class okay till then goodbye